This is the Marvel Multiverse role-playing game core rulebook, and today we're going to be talking about power riffing and robot bond. So, what is power riffing? Riffing a power, which is first mentioned on page 285, is the act of adapting a power to your own needs by adding a new style and special effect in order to change the tone of the original power. The example of riffing a power that is included in the core rulebook is adding a darkness element to the elemental control power set, with the same special effect as the energy element. The powers in the power set work mechanically the same, but are stylistically and tonally different thanks to the introduction of the new element. Now, let me introduce to you Robot Bond. Animal Bond, a power on page 82, can easily be riffed to instead be Robot Bond. It mechanically works the same as Animal Bond, but instead of building a telepathic bond with a specific animal you've befriended, it allows you to build a telepathic bond with a specific robot you've befriended. You should ask your narrator if it would be okay to riff Animal Bond into Robot Bond. So one thing that I want to talk about real quick is that there is a power in the book called Machine Telepathy. And Machine Telepathy kind of works like telepathic bond, but with machines. And I would argue that Machine Telepathy is not as good as Robot Bond. So essentially what machine telepathy allows you to do is to telepathically communicate with machines and you can ask them to do things for you. But if the machines have any kind of security built into them, you have to pass a logic check in order to get the machine to follow your instructions. It's essentially like psychic hacking. Now, the way animal bond works is that you essentially have like an animal friend who will more or less do whatever you ask them to do. So by changing animal bond to robot bond, now you have a robot friend, which will essentially do anything you ask them to do. It essentially gets rid of the whole, you have to complete a check thing. You know, you just have this essentially second character that you can interact with thanks to the power of robot bond. So I would argue that robot bond is better than machine telepathy. Because I can already see people jumping in the comments being like, why would you rift this power? Machine telepathy already lets you do that. I kind of disagree. Not only do I think robot bond is better than machine telepathy, I also think it's significantly better than animal bond due to the fact that characters can actually create and repair robots with a logic ability check. This means your character can repair the robot they're bound to if it's destroyed or potentially build a new one. The more complex the robot, the higher the target number for the logic ability check to repair or create it. Here are the target numbers for building robots based on the difficulty. So you got trivial at 5, easy at 7, routine at 9, challenging at 11, difficult at 13, ridiculous at 15, and absurd at 17. So these are essentially the numbers that you need to roll on 3d6, uh, three six-sided die, adding your ability modifier, specifically your logic ability modifier or your logic ability score. Now let's talk about how to optimize your roles for creating or repairing robots because that's going to be extremely useful if your narrator allows you to riff on Animal Bond and use Robot Bond. So the average roll for 3d6 is 10.5, which 10.5 is kind of an impossible roll on 3d6. Uh, that's kind of one of the weird things you run into with averages. If we want, you can say on average, it's about rolling like a 10, essentially. So whenever you do one of these rolls, no ability modifier added or whatever, it's around rolling like 10. That's what you're going to get on average. If your character has the occupation engineer, which is on page 58, and their history explains that they routinely build robots, then your character could arguably make building such robots an ability check that they'll succeed on average, since the average roll for 3d6, which is 10.5, but we can just say is 10, is greater than 9, and 9 is the routine target number for like a logic check. So in other words, you're using your character's history to establish how easy it is for them to build robots, and then using that to inform the check so that the check is easier. The engineer occupation also gives your character the gearhead and inventor trait. Now, the inventor trait, which is on page 62, is especially useful because it will give you an edge on creating your robot. 
The engineer occupation also gives you the lab access tag, which would provide you with the tools and equipment needed for you to build robots, and could potentially give you an additional edge on the check, though that's up to your narrator. The book doesn't say just because you have a lab you get edge on the check, but ask your narrator, maybe they'll let you do it. If you have four ability points in logic, the max at rank one, then your average 3D6 roll plus logic ability modifier would be 14.5. This would allow you to on average create or repair robots that would normally be difficult to create or repair. If you have the power brilliance one, which is on page 86, and a logic ability score of four, then your average 3D6 roll plus logic ability modifier would be 15.5. This would allow you to on average create or repair robots that would normally be ridiculous to create or repair. And keep in mind, there are only so many target numbers. Uh, so getting to ridiculous at rank one is pretty good. Um, unless what you're trying to do is considered by your narrator to be absolutely absurd or impossible, you're essentially going to be able to do it as long as it's something that can be done with a logic check, uh, which is pretty nice. Now, if you want to kick it up a notch, though I wouldn't recommend doing this, you could use the surprising power trait on page 62 to get the brilliance 2 power on page 86, but honestly, this wouldn't do much to change your average 3D6 roll plus logic ability modifier. It doesn't bump you up from that ridiculous to absurd level of robot creation slash repair on an average roll. Now, you may be wondering, why do I keep hyping up average roll, average roll, average roll? I keep hyping up average roll because on the regular, you're not going to be rolling like all ones nor on the regular are you going to be rolling like all sixes so it's better when building your character trying to like optimize your roles to think about what your results will be on average versus trying to like highball or lowball because if you highball and assume that you're always rolling three sixes well if you're always rolling three sixes you're probably just gonna pass most stuff anyways keep in mind that absurd only requires 17 and all three sixes is 18 so of course you're going to get that and if you assume that you're always going to be rolling just three ones then you're essentially going to be failing like all the time <laughs> so it makes a lot more sense to look at it from this average roll perspective now my question for you is do you think robot bond is a good riff off of animal bond like do you think that's fair uh, do you think it doesn't really make sense to riff robot bond off of animal bond because a robot is something significantly different from an animal? Uh, let me know, because I could see it either way, um, especially if you're like, hey, I'm trying to create a character whose whole thing is that he works alongside robots, and animal bond is essentially what I want, but my character, of course, isn't working with animals, they're working with robots, so if you just like riff it so that it's like robot bond, it works perfect with my character, I could totally see a narrator being like, yeah, like that makes sense. You know, you're not doing anything like too different, but then in reality, due to the nature of it being a robot, it's actually like crazy different. You're <laughs> the narrator is essentially allowing you access to like potentially a way more broken power than Animal Bond is, and woo, I made a whole video about how busted Animal Bond is, so if you haven't checked that out, I definitely recommend doing so uh, after watching this video. But yeah, what do you think? Do you think this is like a fair riff off of Animal Bond? Let me know in the comment section below. Make sure you like and subscribe, and thank you for watching. This is your host, your friend, your boy, Jet Black, the one only, logging out. Peace, guys. Check it out.